Hydreigon has been a Pokemon that always scared me. Since Generation 5, I thought this Pokemon was impossible to switch into. In Drafting Environment, I hated it because the damage output of Hydreigon was always so unnecessarily high. While it didn't have any way of boosting itself in early generations, it clearly was a threat to be reckoned with. And before I even go over how I think um, Hydreigon was a lot better this generation, I do want to mention why it wasn't the Apex Wall Breaker it was supposed to be in its introduction, and while it did got buffs with every individual generation, it still had something to hold it back, and as a whole made it, well, tough to use. Now the stat of the Hydreigon is quite fair, um, 92 in HP to get with a split defenses of the 90s, it is definitely a bulkier Pokemon, even got access to something like Rose to be able to pull a defensive role, 105 in its attack is quite high, but the special attack is where it's at, 125, that's a very high special attack unboosted, and it's just making this Pokemon so tough to switch into, it's real Achilles heel and the reason it wasn't that good, in generation 5, or rather, why it wasn't better in generation 5, I should say, was because of that 98 speed here. Generation 5 is known as the weather generation, together with the Apex Wall Breaker, the were fighting types, Terrakion, Keldeo, all of these punished Hydreigon so much, and it just made Hydreigon not necessarily unviable, but extremely hard to use naturally. And as a whole, Hydreigon was always a double-edged sword. While it could break apart teams, it also struggled versus certain matchup. And it didn't help that a Dark was actually, or a Dark and Dragon combination was resisted to steel times, which forced you to run something like Fire Blast or anything else. But in the re generation without fairies, it actually had a large damage output. You even saw this Pokemon use something like Focus Blast or Fire Blast to be able to nuke Chansey and Blissey. Because while it is unboosted special attack, it, it's still quite high and does punish naturally. In X and Y, things got very, very rough for Hydreigon. It didn't get anything worthwhile besides getting a new weakness. So it's only real buff was as now dark was neutral to steel types, but fairies pretty much made sure that you have no switching. Um, you forced Hydreigon to run now dual stab, of course. You didn't necessarily have to run fire blast or focus blast, but you were forced to run um, flash cannon to be able to hit fairies. This basically meant the end of Hydreigon's OU era. Hydreigon, however, was always deemed good in OU. There was really no like drawback like that power output was still quite high, it was just that issue of a defined fairy switching that pretty much made Hydreigon impossible to use reliably without having counterplays in the switchings. For example, Mega Dayenshi, Mega Lopani just eat this Pokemon up naturally and they were supposed to be the best of the best Mega Pokemons. And besides that, like they were never a really speedy fairy in Generation 6 besides its Mega Evolution, and even if you weren't speedy, most of the fairy types were defensive enough to stomach hits, one of them being of course Clefable, and uh, it just, it wasn't as good as it could have been. That said, the damage output were still quite high, and um, if it was used in OU, it was because it was worth the risk, because quite frankly, there are very few Pokemon that would really like to switch in on this. In Sun and Moon, it got a real buff, but it still resides in, o in UU, I was gonna say OU, but it was usable in OU still. But its real buff came with Defog. Levitate to get it with Defog is a phenomenal combination, as it gives your immunity to spikes and toxic spikes and sticky web, which makes you a reliable Defogger, as we talked before. Its defensive merits are quite there, the 92 plus 90 in its defense and special defense are high. And as a whole, it is phenomenal. It, its speed there was still an issue, but at the same time, you could use Sea Crystal to really, really punish switching. Uh, a combination I saw that I really liked was actually the Steelium C and actually be able to go modest versus the more defensive responses. Um, Clefable, yet again, being one of those where them, the Flash Cannon could Oko if it done right. You could also use something like Iron Tail or Super Power to be able to punch hole in Blissey or um, go for physical, of course, Iron Tail and see more Sea Crystal variant of Iron Tail and actually, well, 
outperform any type of switching, but still keep your high special attack, attack with, you know, the combination of Dark and Dragon, which to an extent were a perfect combination minus fairies. Uh, so, with that only being the switching, it did pretty much make the same issue for Dragon as it was in XY, which is, there were speedier threats that made it obsolete, and not only that, but when you have a combination that beats you and you can't one it KO them, then Hydreigon is dead weight, and as a defogger, while good, it probably was better as a draft Pokemon than as uh, an OU Pokemon. Hydreigon in Draft League was very, very suitable for a lot of matchups, and has a lot to do with its flexibility in its move pool and the flexibility of actually go defensive. And, uh, you know, it gets torn too, so like, there are anti responsive with Hydreigon that was phenomenal in this generation. But its biggest merits was absolutely in Draft League and not necessarily in Smogon. But yet again, in Smogon OU, while it was a big risk of using it, the reward of doing it right were immense, as yet again, the switch-ins to Hadrigan minus the Fairies were very hard to find, and Hadrigan outperformed a lot of matchup very well. Then we come to the generation where they fixed him, and um, it really didn't require all that much. Basically, what needed to happen was that um, Game Freak or Pokemon needed to decide whether or not this is a sweeper or a wall breaker. And with moves such as Nasty Plot and Dragon Dance, you get to make that decision. <laughs> it actually is quite great. Nasty Plot allowed this Pokemon to really, really sting it to the defensive switches that maybe we're supposed to actually be able to wall this Pokemon because after one Nasty Plot, you have plus two in your special attack. That is not only highly unlikely, but rather hard to pull off whether or not that's gonna work. Another thing that really helped was that the Mega Pokemon were gone. This means that there were basically no more fairies that could outspeed Hydreigon minus Rebombi. I might be missing out on something, but quite frankly, there aren't that many fairies that are speedy, and Hydreigon can abuse the full of that, as it means that it does outspeed the things that are supposed to beat it, which means it gets a hit in before it falls, and if even better, it might actually plus two even defeat them because of its ridiculous damage output. Uh, another thing that's still lingering but aren't that threatening are. The fighting types that are faster, Mianxiao, Drakion, Cabellion, Verision, but there aren't uh, yet again that many of them. And Hadragon can actually, due to the rules of Smog and OU right now, where it could before, but now it actually is usable to do, use Psychic Train. Um, negate, Ice Shard, Mac Punch with Indeedee, and all of a sudden you have a Hydreigon that are not scared of any type of priority at all and be able to actually output its damage naturally after plus two without having to worry about the Cobalion, the Mammoth Swine, because it can actually outspeed them or not have to worry about priority and kill them in return. If there's a Guts Conk, that plus two Draco, yeah, that's it, that's over, that's GG. Same with Mammoth Swine, like without the Ice Shard, the Flash Gun is gonna pop that guy. And that's another aspect, Dynamax. Dynamaxing, while not allowed in Smoke and OU, while it was, plus two plus Dynamaxing? Mm-hmm. Mm. That Max Steel Spike was just phenomenal. I uh, really, really made sure there were no defensive <laughs> fairies that ever could even consider taking a hit from Hydreigon. Hydreigon was pretty much the best Dragon types. It was between Dragapult and Hydreigon, and the reason Dragapult is still considered slightly better is because it does avoid damage because of its high speed here. But the damage output is nowhere near, and Hydreigon just still shines at this Pokemon that now is decided to what it can be, and it can be both a Wall Breaker and a Sweeper. Yes, the Dragon Dance said, while not as viable, one of five in attack is still quite high, and with moves like Crunch, Outrage, Superpower, Iron Tail, come on, there, there is some damage I put here that are very, very, <laughs> I was going to say undiscovered, but it's discovered, just not as effective as the special set. So overall, I'm very happy that they figured out Hydreigon and actually gave it a perfect shot. I never believed Hydreigon was bad ever, but the meta games around it forced it to not be used as widely as it could have been. And it seems like its introduction was maybe a generation too late, as has something like this been in generation 4. It might have been more decisive, but it really came to its own generation 8. And uh, the smaller Pokedex made this Pokemon shine a lot more as the responses for it was not in the game, and it also meant that its damage output was unrivaled. So, to... well, 
to Pokemon, I really want to say thank you for fixing Hydreigon, and I really hope you continue this trend of actually revisiting all Pokemons that just were shy of being very viable but had the meta against them because I really like rediscovered Pokemons and Hydreigon represents probably the very best of just that. So as always, thanks for of course watching and uh, what do you guys think of Hydreigon this generation? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's something that could be done to make it better? I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking and as always, take care everyone.